effort as well to lock your attention span. Amen. And um, I don't know whether you like um, critical reasoning, but I love real critical reasoning. I love thinking through things. As in, do you understand? And so, you know your life is actually better from meditation. It's not just only reading. How many of you have been doing the projects for Dazo? Oh, okay, now I see the number of hands that have not been doing it. How many of you have been reading your Bibles? Okay, that's a better consolation. So let's let's just look at this. So, um, so I'm just going to um, just share a few thoughts with you um, concerning something that the Spirit of God quickened in my heart in the week. And that is concerning the subject of our walk, our walk of faith. And there is very, there is need to explain this concept very well because I believe that one of the few things that God is doing with us as a church, as a gathering of believers here, and not just only for this local assembly. Are you following me? Sound, are we good? All right. Um, not only for this local assembly, is to, is to set the standard of truth. Is to position truth at a particular level. You set the standard of truth. Not make truth subject to our experiences, but put truth where it is. Do you understand that? Why? Because, for example, you see this, our KJV Bible. Well, I'm using KJV. I'm very biased with KJV. They won't update it till you go to be with the Lord. So this thing will always be there and your children's children will still read this thing. So the same principles that govern your life today will govern their life in that day, no matter what the world looks like. Are you, are you following me? So, you know, so let me tell you, it's like a, a press statement from God. God is like saying, I really don't care what's going on around. This will always be true and relevant every time. Hallelujah. But I've come to see by virtue of experience that people have a difficulty or rather have begun to subscribe to this level of reasoning where we must subject truth to contemporary relevance. And it is good. Listen to me, take it. And it is good. But it's not good enough. So where we begin, I, I, I must teach you how Peter's ship and Peter's boat turns down to be your business. Yes, I, it's beautiful. But sometimes you need to just learn truth for what it is. Understand what the content of the word is first. We are not, find out what is inside there. That's why we are doing our projects. But also read it and fill up your mind with what God has said. That is how it should live then it is from the overflow of the, the, the meditations and the cogitations of all that has happened in your spirit that should form the basis of your outlook and wisdom and disposition to things and life. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. So when we, 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 we're looking at this subject of... We, so in the week, the, the Spirit of God said... Um, drawing to my heart um, this subject of uh, our walk of faith. And I'll, I'll still bring it down. I'll still tailor it from um, all this, the teachings we had from Genesis, explaining the plan of God for man. Praise God. Hallelujah. And explaining how that the plan of God for man was dominion. It's dominion. Still dominion. And that dominion can only be expressed by the man that is born again. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we dovetailed into what we, the series, uh, as we, or the series of teachings where we explained where you need to understand who your enemy is. Understanding your enemy. And, and, and we started explaining how that this, your enemy, your enemy knows your value. Your enemy, <clears throat> your enemy knows who you are, knows what you are capable of doing. Your enemy has always been your enemy. I'm talking about Satan. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
So let's go on. And so your enemy has always been your enemy and has been a family enemy for a very long time. As a matter of fact, this is the enemy of your father. You only inherited enemies. So this guy has always plotted every form of evil plans against your father and that plan he still has against his children. Amen. Praise God. Please try and switch off your phone so we minimize distraction. And so, sometimes, some of the problems you have is because someone hates your father and so, by extension, hates you. And we started explaining some of the ways and manner by which the enemy, Satan, what he does. We started looking at the different devices. The Bible says we should not be ignorant of what? The devices of the enemy. He says, the, the meaning of that scripture says that I do not want you to live life in such a way where the devil is doing things and you do not know. So it is, it's like, the, I don't want you to get to a place where the devil is beating you to your game. So he's saying that this thing is a real warfare strategy where your enemy has a, a, his warfare strategies to take you down. And if you are not wise, according to the word, you will, you will be beaten. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, and we have come to see that that is a very serious thing to note and watch out for. <clears throat> Praise God. To note and watch out for. And we started looking at the strategies of the enemy. And Jesus, <clears throat> and we, 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 we've been able to come with, I'm not going back, and, but Jesus was able to show us that when the word of the kingdom is sown into the heart of a person, he says that Satan cometh immediately to steal that word. Jesus made that statement so many years ago, and that statement is still true and relevant where? Today. Amen. Is that true? Your first deception is to believe that there is no Satan. There are some churches that... <clears throat> Come on, are you listening to me? There's some, let, let's leave churches. There are some believers that live like that. They, they're, they're simply, you are too, you are too, too weird to always think about the devil. Like, what would you be talking about? Talk about Jesus Christ. All right. I don't even have time for that one now. That's, that's even... And number two, so Jesus, Jesus <clears throat> made that statement so many years ago. And we saw the pattern when he did that with Adam. Right? We saw the pattern. And so Jesus explained. He called the disciples aside to himself and said, Come on, listen, listen to me very closely. Whenever anything that pertains to this kingdom in terms of words is communicated to someone who is the, capable of hearing those words, any word of the kingdom that is that lives and is sown, Satan comes for that word. And so it's just to say, hello, dear believer, the moment there is a word transaction, be, be aware that you have attracted your enemy as well. Be smart enough to know that fact. And you know what Jesus did? Jesus now explained that how does he, he, well, he used like four different ways he, he comes to steal the word. We looked at it. The first, he uses the cares of this world. The cares of this world. You know what it means to the cares of this world? The, the business of life as to what we will eat, what we will wear, what we will drink. The, the, Business and that word care, the root word there is distraction. It simply means that when your mind is constantly running back and forth over a particular thing, you are just anxious for nothing. 
you're just constantly brooding, worrying, and he says he comes with cares. So, so listen, that is where this thing, ah, can I see it? I'm, it feels like I'm going to rock some tables. So Jesus will tell you that you either serve God or mammon and begins to say, do not um, worry what you will eat. and do what you... He says, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. But for you, you seek first the kingdom of God. Meaning that I've given you a plan and purpose in life. There are some other people that will battle all they will wake up and sleep. All they will wake up and go to bed doing is about what they will eat. But you know what? Your father had knowing that you have need of all of this. So he wants to take care of you more than the way you want to take care of yourself. But he wants you to put in front of your eyes that the kingdom is primarily important in this life than what we will eat, wear, drink, and all of these things. So the Christian has a focus. Those outside have a focus. Hello, do you understand me? So the moment he has... Listen, he has successfully taken you out of the way. I didn't say you should not get a job. He has successfully taken you out of the way when all you are about is what you will eat. What you will wear. As in, I, I don't have the time to, so do, to beam so much light on that. Then he uses, he says another one, persecution and affliction. He says that a persecution and affliction arises for the word's sake. It says those who, that word has not seated, is, is not rooted inside of them. That when persecution comes, when affliction comes, they are the first to be offended and they, they, they pull out. I, I, as in, you understand? Some people will back off from this faith. Jesus has made it clear. Some people will back off from following me. The moment people, there is heat. The moment someone comes because we are a follower of Jesus and they come against them, they will back off. Are you following me, what I'm saying? So, you, you, see, you see some people in church, they're not really, really, uh, uh, how do I say this? Pray, see, let the word settle in your heart. Let the word dwell in you richly, praise God. Praise God. Jesus did not tell us there that some government can come and close down churches. Jesus did not tell us. But is it, is it happening? You know, someone can bring a gun and tell you to renounce your faith. You know, we have not gotten to that stage. But you know, some people are already in that stage in this world. And you know, it's enough for you to say, Jesus, ah, ah, me or shame more. <clears throat> Persecution and affliction. If they put you in prison for the same gospel, would you still keep believing? Would you? Then he went on and on and on. And that's where I want just, just, just try and just share with you the thoughts of my heart. Because now it's beginning to dawn on us. Listen, a faith not worth dying for is not worth living for. So this thing, so you know, let me, let me explain like this. <clears throat> oh, Jesus, praise God. Glory to God. So, so at the time when people came before the altar and said, Jesus, I believe you. I want to make you Lord and Savior of my life and all of that. You Some of them, you know, some of them really did not envisage what can come with this faith. Amen. I did not forget when I said that we're going to teach, talk about um, the in him, in him realities. Right? Remember? And we were saying that since Satan comes for the word. I said, so what is so important about this word that Satan comes to steal? And we we're looking at the strategies in Ephesians chapter 6. Amen? Come on, are you following me? Have you slept off? 
You are with me. And we started looking at Ephesians chapter 6. And, and, and that's where we started saying, um, take on, please just help me, Ephesians 6. And he begins to talk about um, 6.10. Praise God. And so we're looking at what exactly is it about this word? Amen. What's exact, exactly about this word? What's the real thing about this word that makes this Satan comes to steal? Right? 610. And says, so finally, my brethren, be strong where? And in the power of what? And what should you do? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Why? For we do not wrestle against what? Flesh and blood. But against what? Principalities. Against what? Powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Yes. Therefore take up what? The whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done what? All stand. To stand. Yeah. So stand therefore having your having guarded your waist with what? Having put on what? The breastplate of wrath. And so we started looking at this concept and of course the gospel of peace. And we started looking at this concept and saying that this concept really do not mean that in the spirit realm there is helmet. There is yes, you can look at it like that but he was simply trying to say that the first thing, your enemy he says, put on the waist, the, be- um, the belt of truth. Meaning that your enemy is concerned about truth. The next one was what? The breastplate of what? Righteousness. Meaning your enemy is concerned about righteousness. The next one is what? The gospel of peace. Your enemy is concerned about your peace. The next one is what? The shield of it. The enemy is concerned about what? Your faith. See, listen, this thing that I'm saying to you, you need to just shout it out, shout it out, and shout it out everywhere. Your enemy is concerned and particular about these things. It's particular about your faith. It's particular about your righteousness. Because every time the word of the kingdom is sown, it sows these things. So every time you hear the word of God, truth is brought to you, righteousness is shown to you, peace is ministered to you, what? Faith is ministered to you, right? Come on, amen. Are you with me? <clears throat> so you you see, so if your enemy is going to come for you, the only way he needs to see, listen, you are weak when you have you do not have all of this arm when you do not have this armor on. You're weak simply. You're simply weak when you don't have this armor. So every single time, just t- tap your neighbor by your side. Tap your neighbor by your side. Every single time the devil comes for you, he comes for these things. See, we've described this. See, see, you know, for us, when we, we, we're coming to church, we're lifting up our hands and we're worshipping and we're receiving the word and we're praying in tongues and we're doing all of this. You know what is going on? You are fastening these things on you. Are you listening to me? Every time you are engaging yourself in one spiritual activity or the other, what you are doing is you are fastening these things on you. So they have to drop they have to lose. You have to get to some point where you remove your helmet and so your enemy can get you. And he begins to make you feel you thoughts with thoughts, your helmet of salvation. He needs to fill you with thoughts like you're not saved. Fill you with thoughts, you know, you know you're not worth anything. Who told you that you're worth the blood of Jesus Christ? As in, who really told you you're worth the blood of Jesus Christ? And but you know what? Your enemy will not come and tell you directly to your face, Chin and Yendu, who told you that you are worth the blood of Jesus Christ like that? You know what he will do? He needs to make the situations you face. He needs to make the situations you face make you feel that God does not love you. Mm-mm. Did you did you get me? 
see, the lack of money in your bank account can minister to you. And you know what it will minister to you? You are an abandoned orphan. You see that nobody is taking care of you? I thought you said you prayed yesterday for money. Did anything come yesterday? Nothing. Oh, come on. It feels like my voice is echoing. Can you hear me? When we go through the week, do you see any advantages that come and tell you that God does not love you? No. All you need to go through is situations and circumstances in life. They are so orchestrated to pass across a message to you that you are abandoned. So when we say, oh, oh come on, are you with me in church? They need to, see, everything you go through from Monday, if I tell you, chronicle your week from Monday to Saturday, you will have one thing or the other that is trying to minister to you weakness. It's trying to remind you of your failures. You'll find something that reminds you of your lack. You'll find something that reminds you, maybe you're not spiritual enough. You find something that tells you you are not good enough. You find something that tells you you are not loved. You find something that tells you and you feel that thing every day. Day in, day out. Am I the only one? And so you are going to a particular situation. You know, maybe it's because you... This thing is too complicated. This faith is too complicated. You know, maybe you can't... Listen, we generate heat in church. Your enemy blows the AC. Let me remind you. <clears throat> because if you think about our Christian faith, we are like people that are on a mission that are going against the tide. You know where the world is? The world is going this way. And trust me, do you know who is behind them? The enemy. He's blowing them like this. Go on. And so you know what? Scriptures have told us that there is a way that cement right unto a man. In his right senses, he's thinking, this is the way. And you know what the Bible tells us about that path? It says that broad is the way that leads to destruction. It says the way that leads to life is narrow. And you know what the Bible, it doesn't stop there. It says there are very few that find it. So when we tell you to pray in tongues to generate solution to your problem, is a narrow path. It's not everybody that can bear that statement. Trust me, listen, let me tell you something. When some people are in their fix, they will not pray in tongues. You know why? Because there's a way that seems right unto them. It is better I fix my issues myself than this praying in tongues part. You know what? You think that praying in tongues is still inside that heart. The devil has stolen it away. The moment your reaction cannot be word-based, that word has been stolen. The moment something hits you, your bank account goes flat, and you cannot be bold enough to say that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. If it has been stolen from you, listen, you will just be, um, which uncle do I call? Your circumstances are wired to remind you that you have not been saved. As in, remind you of your past before you got saved. Everything, look at it, look at it, look at it. Are you reviewing your life? And listen, you, what is worse is that you, we even have bad friends like Job that will still come and tell you in the name of good advice. And you know what they're telling you? Cause God and die. Or, or rather, cause God, my uncle will save you. Cause God and take the other alternative. So, people want to welcome the idea that it is difficult to live a Christian life. No, they stole it from them. And they are sounding like, you, do, you know, do you know, Peter came one day and said, Ah, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, Ah, I'm going to die and I'm going to be resurrected. And Jesus, uh, Peter, the same Peter came to Jesus and said, Far be it from you, master. How would you die? And you know, Jesus, Jesus did not hear or see the same Peter. What he saw is a reasoning pattern that is only like the devil. The only person that would ever encourage me on the path to what God is doing in my life that would tell me not to die, to preserve my soul, to be a king amongst people, to be popular, to be on Forbes list, to make the headlines and remain on the headlines, but not to die is the devil. And he can come like a friend 
that tells you not to do what God tells you to do. Even the scriptures, listen, are you, are you, you will need to put your eyes on the word alone, train your senses, train your ears. Like the Bible says that those who are by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern both good and evil. You also need to train your senses, your eyes, your ears to know what the word says so that when you hear something that is not the word, you will be able to repent and say, far be it from me. Satan, get behind me. There are some people you know, tell Satan, get behind me. I was reading an Andrew Walmart book and he was talking about his son. Listen, one thing about confession, and I, and I beseech you, listen, let me tell you something. I will, we will not. I, see, it's like, you know, doctors have the heart of hippo, what do they call that thing? Whatever, whatever it is, you have. They have that oath that they will stick by the conduct of this profession and not do anyhow, right? Listen, I am also on that oath, on that this place, to tell you the truth. Because no, if I, I, how many likes do I want to get from you? I'm going to still stand before heaven and they will ask me, did you tell them what I told you? So you know what? I am on that oath to tell you the truth. Do you know? Oh, Jesus. I'm, I'm, I'm so holding myself to do this. Because if I don't tell you the truth, then what, I, what, what are we here for? Listen, we're not just a church that will just pam, pam, pam you on the I have to tell you the truth. You see, if you cannot stand up, man up, face the situations that we face today with the word, if you want to use the excuse of what is going on out there, what will happen in another 10 years? Do you know that you are the hope of even the children that are yet to be born? They need to see, just like Timothy had a grandmother and a mother that was still in the faith. Someone needs to come to this world and see you still believing. Oh, come on. You're not, you're not listening to me. Someone needs to come and say, I know how my mother should wake up in the night and pray. Someone who is still contending for the faith. Are you willing to just subscribe and, and abandon your life to what is going on around I'm on that oath to tell you the truth. That is not how life ought to be lived. If men lived it like that, we will not find anything today. And, it's, and, and for some of us, we are still victims of some people's failures. Of the faith. Even of the faith. Hallelujah. So every time when we are interacting with the word, we are doing something to ourselves. Listen, listen, listen. I was talking about Andrew Womack, right? And I go to God, see, guys, find your confessions and say them the very first thing you do in the day. As in, as you are opening your eyes, pick your confessions and say them. Why? Because as soon as you decide to switch on your data and open your status and open one thing, you know, you know, we, we are guilty of that thing. The first thing you want to check is the messages that have come in since over the night, or those who have uploaded, those who don't sleep, uh, upload status in the night. And and you and you are and the first thing you feed your eyes in the morning is bad news. You know, some people's faith, faith just derailed at that answers period. I mean, like lucky, lucky brutality. Oh my God, we are all dead. It came out from some people's mouth in the morning. You know why I'm saying this? The very first thing that should, feel, let you, should encounter your eyes should be the word. The very last thing before you sleep should be the word. Let me tell you, your enemy is walking day and night, walking to and fro the earth, looking for how many more words he can steal. You see, you're still seated here because there's still a measure of word inside of you. You know what Jesus said? You can hear me because my word is inside of you. If my word is not inside of you, you will have no capacity to hear what I am saying. It's because you still believe God, you still want to stand on his word, that's why you are in church. You know what? Because this world is constantly walking around providing solutions as alternatives to what God can do for you. Oh. So, so if I, you can get this without faith, What's the essence of believing God? And that's why 
we are re- gradually entering into a mistake where we believe God for, where we think that God is, what, where we hold God to do what, okay, no, no, rather, where we think that what the faith is about is what other people can do. That's not what the faith is. The faith is not about, I was broke and now I have more money. No. No. So when you have more money, what else would you do? You won't believe anymore. I didn't have a wife and now I have a wife. I'm done. The faith is not subject to our needs. It can fix our needs. But it's not why we believe. It's not. It's not why we believe. So I'm going back to my Andrew Womack. So he, Andrew Womack had gotten so used to a pattern where he would speak the word over his life, his family, his children. You know what? And you, when, when you do that consistently, you know what happens? It begins to fill your heart. And let me just drop it quickly. Oh, come on. There's just too much to say. Are, you, are, you, are we all right? Are we going on? Are you learning anything? Now listen. And so, and he had gotten to this point. This is, and let me tell you something about confessions. I see, and don't be swallowed up by, I, I've been confessing for one month now, nothing's happening. I also need to check your confessions. Maybe your confessions are about, um, Lord, give me shoe, give me this. I'm, I see, see, real confessions, real confessions consist of what God has said of you. And you saying to God what he has said of you. That's confessions. Now listen. And so he had consistently put the word of God in his mouth. And you know what? The, his wife, he himself, his son, and his mother went on a holiday somewhere. And in the course of their way, something happened. The son, <laughs> they got into a hotel room and the son coughed in close around 11 p.m. Just coughed like that. Ah! He heard that cough. You know, there's a kind of cough you will immediately interpret that, ah, this child already has so, 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 so illness. But he did not allow it to come out from his mouth. But you know what his mother did? This boy has caught the flu. We need to take him to the hospital immediately. He did not respond. In the night, the thing got serious. Now look at this. It got a bit serious. The boy was now really coughing. And the mother was now... And he told the mother face to face, don't do this. He said, he said, he said, he said, Satan, get behind me. And then the mother hushed. And you know, because the very first time when the child coughed, he prayed. You know, when you pray, believe God. And the cough again at 1 a.m. And like two times or three times. And you go be, rebuke the devil. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. There is no sickness in our bodies. Do you understand? God has given us. He said the word of God, spoke the word of God, prayed about the child again. 3 a.m. Oh, 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 oh. He went back there. So this time the mother couldn't take it anymore. Can't you see that this boy is just sick? Can't you just take him to the hospital? What is all of this? And he said, Satan. And the mother kept quiet. He said, throughout that holiday, she didn't say a word to him again. And now on their way back, he just tried to engage the conversation with the woman. And then the woman just broke down in tears and said, I can't believe that you call me Satan. <laughs> oh my. And he said, Mother, of course you know you are not Satan. It's just that the problem is that the words you were speaking at that time were not in alignment with what I believe. By the way, the child got better. But actually, the child got better after the woman showed up. And, but you know what? When you have confessed the word of God long enough over your affairs, when you hear a lie, you will tell. It will look like a sting. When someone tells you you are a failure, after you have told yourself you are a success, for like a million times and they use the word failure in a disguised form you will still look at the person and tell the person to keep quiet or if you are you are nice enough you will walk away from that place and reassure yourself i'm a success that's how success people think we don't wait for our president to declare that it is well 
we declare for ourselves that it is well. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So, the true normal confession is that you can speak God's word enough to a point you will begin to have an immunity. Let me tell you something. When you, begin, when you speak the word of God, it has, it's, an, it's an anointing. It's like, you will literally, just the same way when you feel, when you pray in tongues for some time, you will literally feel the anointing. And the more you expose yourself to it, you will literally tell, even in the course of your day, that you are garrisoned by something. The words of your confessions will begin to smell around you. It will begin to hold you. Even you, when you want to just give your mouth to say something that is not right, you will feel pricked in your spirit to hold back. And sometimes if you have said the wrong word, you will feel, the, you will feel it inside that you, you just lied. And, 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 and you know what you just do? You just cast that word to the ground. I cast that word to the ground. Because the Bible does not say that it's only the good words that you say that will come to pass. Anyone you say will come to pass. By your words you will be justified, you will be condemned. It is the same mouth. In this same mouth is life and death. You can speak anyone you like on yourself. Praise God. So, every time the word of the kingdom is communicated, identity is communicated. You, who you really are in God's word is communicated to you. Is that that your enemy is going after? Maybe when you get home, just take your time, put out all those parts in the armor and look at them closely. And like I said, your enemy will come in disguised form. He is the AC to your oven. When you are hitting up, praying in the Holy Ghost, and then, you, you know the reason why some people don't want to pray again? It's AC. The AC is too much for them. They, come and pray. Come and pray. You see, it's, you, have, you, have been too, you have been too exposed to the AC. You understand what I mean by that? It's not good for you. The AC is not good for you. Hallelujah. looking at the time. I just started teaching. Just started. Ha. Glory to God. So, now let me come, let me just drop this. So listen, closely, and I want you to pick this, pick this. Every single time the word is communicated, identity is communicated, who you really are is communicated. The Christ image you are is communicated. So that image remains steadfast in your heart. And now, and, and we, we have to teach about understanding your enemy so that you will not just live in the mindset of only just talking about what God says of you, but you will always remember that someone is very eager to take it away from you. So, for example, like I said, the first thing you can do for yourself is to re- speak the word of God, as in make your confessions. You know what it will have done for you? It will have put your mind in a mental gear, giving you a mental disposition to the day. So when the enemy comes in disguised format through different situations, you already know what is going on. Come on, are you listening to me? You know, some, you know the Bible says that he that has no tame over his spirit is like a city without walls. If you are the kind of person where something happens, every time you react, a small thing happens, you react. A small thing happens, you react. You are like a city without walls. All your enemy needs to do is to find the right buttons, press them, shoot the right arrows and get them. She'll be speaking nonsense. So every time, listen to this, every time I pick the scriptures to confess about God, what God says concerning myself, I speak it with the mindset that this thing is the very priced thing to heaven and the most important thing in, on earth. And you know what? Is the is the only thing my enemy is interested in. 
Listen to me. I did not say, see, pick up the newspaper, pick up the headlines. I did, the Bible did not tell me that your enemy is interested in the headlines of the newspaper. No. He's only telling you that every time you pick up the scriptures and you speak up the word of God concerning yourself, that is what your enemy is after. If I put up, I, 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 I wanted to bring some confessions. Uh, put up, just like we had confessions in a few. Uh, have you ever, has he ever dawned on you that I am a believer, I am not a doubter? Is they are coming for it to make you a doubter, not a believer? Have you thought about it that through the week you can be made to look like a doubter? So every, so every time I pick up my, the, the, my confessions, I'm picking it up and I am ever reminded that this is what he wants. And because this is what he wants, I will say it even more. That's just level one. As in, I will say it even more. So, I, imagine, do you understand? I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Something, someone wants to wear it off you. I, I am a believer. Someone wants to take it off you. The peace of God guards my heart. Someone wants to take it off you. So when stuff happens, ah, and you already start yelling, exclaiming, they've taken it off. So do you know what kind of person you will be when every time your affairs is guarded by the word? You wake, you, you wake up, you sleep, you move in alignment with the word of God. Do you know what kind of person you'll be? Do you know that actually God, in the way he made you, he didn't make you to be moved by things. You know, because the scripture says we walk by faith and not by sight. Meaning that once the thing comes to me by sight, it, is not, it should not move me. So do you know what kind of person you will be? The moment you are not moved by what you see. Do you know what kind of person you will be that what you hear does not move you? Do you know what kind of person you are? It's a, I, I'm, I'm just giving you a little snippet, in, in, just a peep into when we decide to start looking at the in him realities. You will start prizing value into all that God wired just to make you and who he says of you. Hello? When we be just begin to look at the in him realities, what I am in Christ, in whom? In him. As in what all that we have in the beloved. When we begin to look at everything, you begin to remind yourself, oh, this is me. This is what he took time to work out. This is who, what he calls me. I will not call myself something else. And you know what? I, rem I remember you, devil. I'm, rem I'm not ignorant that you want this. But I remember. I you will not get me. You I, keep I keep myself in the word of God. I keep myself in the word of God. Let me tell you why. Your identity is very important. Very, very important. Very, very important. You, you, do you know? Do you know? I, I, I've come to see. I've come to see. By use and by experience. Let me, let me, let me take it this way. You know the Bible talks about we just use the scripture that he that had no tame over his spirit is like a city without walls. In epic times imagine a city, imagine Jericho without the walls. So the walls of any city is the first line of defense. I've come to see by experience. Listen to this.
that if you have a wrong view of yourself, you can pray amiss. For example, you can be encouraged to prayer, but if you do not know how important the word is, what you would think prayer is about is to use prayer to get what you think you don't have. Meanwhile, the word has already cleared it, your identity. So sometimes, and that's what the Bible now says that vain, tr- see, it talks about, um, 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 yes, I know, true religion. It says, but a man who is not capable of bridling his tongue, right? Um, um, I, I need that in James, yes, yes. Please help me with that scripture. We, I just want to just learn the point as we. Apparently, we would, um, James, what, um, what? James chapter three. All right, verse one. Okay. The whole chapter is actually sweet and it's, and it's on the tongue. It's on the tongue. I, I just wish I can do the teaching. But, but there's a particular verse. Of, uh, uh, um, look at them. Um, um, ah, are you sure it's chapter 3? Uh, yes. We can use this one, but this is not the one I want. Let me, let me, let me. What? 126. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. So, James 126. He says, If any among you, if any man among you seem to be what? Come on, church now. How about, are you sleeping? If anyone among you seem to be what? And does not, and, and what? And bridled what? Not his tongue, but what deceived his own heart. This man's what? Beautiful. You know, he did not say, you know, for him to be religious, he would have believed Jesus, he would have, he would, um, have been born again, I mean, filled with the Holy Ghost, kabashing everywhere. That is a religious man. You know what? You can't kabash in other tongues. And your 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 known tongue is is a is oh god I don't want to even say is 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 shooting other things. You know what interesting thing about praying in other tongues, you can pray in other tongues, you speak mysteries, but you know those mysteries are in line alignment with the word. But then you now speak you begin to speak nonsense. So you use your known tongue to scatter everything you said in tongues in the last two hours. So you know what the Bible now says? That the first thing we need to do with a religious man is to educate him to keep his mouth shut. To make him know that if we cannot, if we don't seal this mouth, eh, we will be able to, if we don't seal this mouth, we will find a human being associated with God but is practicing something useless. The entirety of his religious life is useless. So God simply rests a profitable spiritual life to being able to keep your mouth what? Short. Keeping your mouth short simply meaning speaking the right things. Listen, you know it's very easy to pray. If I say, let us begin to pray another time, you know, we, you not think about it. Pa! But you know what? We don't have a prefect that will follow you everywhere and tell you to keep short. We don't have. In the building, you, you, you pray for two hours. But when we go, you know, you, have, you know how many more hours you have outside there? And all you do is speak nonsense. Let me tell you, God needs your tongue. If this kingdom of God will be established on earth, we need you to be able to talk right. Uh, 
And so I have come to see also by virtue of experience, that's what I was trying to say, that a person can pray in other tongues with a wrong identity in mind. Hmm. You can have a picture of yourself that is not in alignment with God's word and pray. You see them around. You know when you call, call to God, Babashe, 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 share what? What else is he going to do? But you know what? The problem is that your mind is not educated. So you are actually calling on to God in vain repetition to do what God has already done in Christ Jesus. So you know what? We don't, you see, listen, I believe that you're, you will begin to be promoted spiritually the moment we can educate you on your identity. And make you realize that the reason why you come to church is to from that word of God that is communicated and sown into you to see who you are. Learn that who you are and not speak outside of who you are. And so when you go to pray, you pray who you are. So we're also going to teach you how to keep quiet and we're going to teach you how to talk. And in the teaching you how to keep quiet and talk, we teach you how to pray based on what we and not forgetting that someone is out there trying to do what? Steal that thing from your mouth. You know what? Some people, the devil steals the word and they go pray. They, their own response to the stolen word is to pray. Not knowing that they should use their mouth and put it back there. So, your daughter is convulsing. Well, hey, God, oh, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, Jesus, I rebuke you. But you know what? You, you did everything, but not, you but did the wrong thing. You didn't do anything right. You did every other thing, but did not do the right thing. Did you get that? That child that is convulsing, first of all, I believe that before that time, you have taken care of the health of your whole family. No devil comes into my world and still, where? In my house. Where? Who are you? By Jesus' stripes, we are healed. So when I see that reaction, first of all, I know who is dealing, who is behind this. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. You came to the wrong address. By Jesus' stripes, you are healed. I pronounce upon you the word of God. Now, let me tell you something. It is based on that you now pray. Because Jesus, I know you have done this. So I rebuke you, what devil? Get your hands off my daughter. You know, it's different from the other reaction. But you know, two people are praying, two persons are praying. But one is praying intelligently, the other person is praying what? Foolishly. And you know what? That person has used that tongue to talk in him. I, I, I get to see, you see the way some people talk. You know, the Bible says that in the multitude of words, lie is not, is not, is not, you, when you see someone talk, ah, yeah. You see the way some people talk, they talk, brush, they talk, they know everything. You just check them out. If you can put a lying watch, they would have lied like five, six, seven times. Like five times within five minutes. They have lied like five times. You just said something about the politics, what is not true. It's not true. You just said something about what Barry did. You, that thing you just said is not true. Do you, are, you, are you following me? You see... You know what the Bible says? God, Lord, Lord, set a watch upon my lips. Lord, as in Lord, set a watch upon my lips. You know what? So that I will not speak profanity, speak things that are not relevant. So people can pray, even in church. But they are, they are, their word level is zero. They are running on an empty tank. But their prayer, they can... Do you understand that? Let me tell you. All those praying in tongues you do is to the end that you will have enough sense to go back to the word and speak the word of God. God is actually hoping that through those praying in tongues, we can get you back to the word to speak right. In the meantime, while you are not, we are still hoping you will get there. If you, sometimes you need to do, you don't wish you know what God is actually saying when you are praying in tongues. That God, I'm pray, interceding. Let this one have sense to come back. To come back to the word. That 
you have done it all. What part of it is finished do you not understand? What part of it is finished do you not understand? On the seventh day he rested. Which one is the eight, seven day walk again? Eight day walk. Do you understand? So you know what? We, I now find it important that if you don't help people see who they are, is the reason why they manifest conducts, behaviors that are outside of the world. That's why. That's why. Praise God. And we will not learn it without being aware. Someone wants to steal it away. We will take this up Sunday. But did you get anything? Did you get anything? Can you just